Welcome guys to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday where we take junk and we turn it into awesome home decor and furniture. Um, this week's episode is we are taking these chairs that we found um, in the back porch because a customer left them for us. They're missing some rungs, they have no seat, um, but they have great bones and good potential. So we wanted to show you guys how we fix that and turn them into products we can sell at our store. We go live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, so make sure you hit that subscribe, notifications, um, button, and bell if you haven't done so yet, and welcome. All right, Zeb, what are we doing here? Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna dowel this side together. Okay. So hopefully we can get a little more uh, structural integrity. It's falling apart up here. There's a split in the top, so I'm gonna throw some glue in that, and then get these rungs. I'm gonna try to fit the rungs in without taking too much apart but I might have to re-glue, and Jamie's going to sand those smooth. Those are seats, hang on. Sorry, <laughs> Those are seats that I cut out. It's just 3 8 plywood. I used the jigsaw. I went ahead and cut them out beforehand because it's real loud and noisy, but just, just traced them out and used the jigsaw real quick and easy. It took maybe five minutes. Yeah, and he just used this as a pattern because these are going to be upholstered and then screwed in from the bottom. They used to have caning on them probably, but a lot of times some of these seats just have like a little upholstery square. And so that's what we're gonna be recreating here. We have some foam and batting. I kind of wanted thinner foam, but this is the best we could find at Walmart this morning. And this um, idea came to me at 5 a.m. this morning. So I woke up Zed before I went to the gym and I'm like, do you have an idea for Waste Not Wednesday? He's like, nothing good. I was like, all right, I know you're tired, but <laughs> this is what we're gonna do. So Zeb grabbed all the supplies for these, so thanks for doing that. So I'm using construction adhesive. Normally I would use wood glue, but this will be much quicker for showing you guys, and it'll still be strong. Well, this works on wood, plastic, glass. I mean, it really works for anything, so it's fine. It's a multi-purpose. It is Gorilla Glue, but it's not the kind of Gorilla Glue that expands. Never use expanding Gorilla Glue on furniture. It will just expand your furniture out and you just won't like that. Alright, I'm not really going crazy. I just don't want to get any splinters while I'm working on this. So, if you guys hop on, tell us where you're from. I'm going to pull up comments here in a minute. We had to redeem ourselves. Last week's Waste Not Wednesday, some people loved it, some people hated it. It was like a 50-50 split. So I was like, all right, this week we're gonna have to take some junk that we got for free and transform it because the people have spoken. <laughs> Apparently crafting on Wednesday is not allowed. <laughs> it's still gonna happen from time to time because I'm, I like to craft every now and then. All right, let me pull up comments here. If you have questions, let us know. Oh, oh. oops. Um, hands down, this is one of the most answered or asked questions we get is how to repair furniture as well as how to fix squares like this. So hopefully it's helpful to you. Um, let's see if we've got any questions we need to ask, well, answer. We'll glue that back on too. Apparently that was waiting to fail. I think everybody's just saying hi. Oh, do we have food safe paint and a food safe sealer? So um, Sweet Pickens Milk Paint and uh, a new brand coming out called Farmhouse Finishes, which is like milk paint, um, only it doesn't chip. Uh, both of those are USDA bio certified. We currently do not sell a food safe sealer, but one is coming from Sweet Pickens here pretty soon. Um, but you can use uh, hemp oil. We don't carry it yet. Or you can use butcher block oil. Just double check, but most brands of those are food safe but the sweet pickings is food safe, so that's really exciting. All right. Okay, so I've got glue in the holes. I'm gonna pull this all the way out because it was loose. So if they have old glue, Zeb, how would you suggest that they fix that? Old glue, like the chairs have yeah, old glue? Yeah, Tammy Beanie's asked, what do we do when there's old glue? I so, think I know, but. So I usually just use like a, uh, a knife or I will also use, I have a Dremel that I like to use to just router that out of there. What about like a heat gun? Does that help maybe? A heat gun? A wood glue is usually pretty hard okay. and typically not activated by heat. If it, they've used hot glue though. If they've used hot glue, yeah. <laughs> I've I mean, seen that many times. The heat will, I mean, you can melt it, but you're also run the risk of burning your wood because wood glue over time, especially if it's really old, just gets really hard and... It doesn't, it doesn't like reactivate with heat, I guess. Um, why do people want food grade safe paint and for sealer? Um, some people want it for their dining tables. Honestly, any dining table that you buy at a store is not gonna be made with food safe paint either because people aren't usually licking their dining table. 
Um, but well, if you're, once it's cured, I once mean. it's cured, it's fine. But a lot of people use food safe paint when they're doing faux finishes on cutting boards to make them look old. Like you can water down the sweet pick and milk paint and make a faux stain. That's food safe. Or uh, bowl, uh, like dough bowls or cheese trays or things that they're going to be putting food on and cutting it and like food that they're actually going to be eating is coming in contact with. So it is um, also a good um, like people want to use it with their their children. Like yeah, so and, and like furniture. A lot of people use sweet pickens milk paint on uh, baby furniture. Uh, high chairs, cribs, things like that, because sometimes kids chew on it. Um, so something to keep in mind there. So I don't know if you saw that. I cut this rung just a little short, and now I'm going to force a bunch of glue down in there. That way I could slip it in. And once the glue dries, I mean, it has these other two rungs. It'll be fairly secure and much better than it ever was. For sure. And um, so we are using Gorilla Glue construction adhesive <laughs> in the... Uh, work on here. This stuff dries really, really quick. I used it to put some canning jar lids next to my candle display that like said the names on it. I just glued the lids right to my display and they haven't come off. I also use it when I'm doing um, IOD molds because it dries really quick. Um, a lot of people like quick and thick, but I actually really like the Gorilla Glue Max Strength Construction in clear. They also make it in a white. So it's kind of a good all purpose. Where is your wood glue? Is that the, is that I have some at our house and some at the farmhouse, and I'm 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 about to get three sets of everything and just call it a day and stop yeah. trying to transfer stuff around. Well, once the farmhouse is finished, it'll be a set for here and a set for the farmhouse, so we're probably okay. We just gotta tough it out till then. Yeah. So it's still a little wonky, but we're gonna tighten up these screws. And once we put this seat on the top, it'll actually hold all of these four pieces that are kind of independent here, it'll hold those together and it'll make this chair a lot more sturdy. This chair is pretty old. How old do you think this is? It it's, looks like a tan cart. So yeah, these are these are hand turned spindles. It's it's pretty old, but it's it's old enough. I might have to get a more serious screwdriver. Well, we later. can do it later. Um, this chair was never designed. It was built when people were smaller. It was never designed to handle like a, a big guy. Like you? Sure, or like me. me. Or oh, me. you're fine. I can sit on it as long as I sit soft. Yeah, so a lot of times chairs from the early 1900s, they're smaller in stature, are made for smaller people, and they're more for looksies rather than sitsies. But we're going to make it as sturdy as we can. Um, it would work for a kid's desk. I get people all the time that need desk chairs, and a lot of desk openings aren't very wide, so these antique chairs are usually the perfect size. All right, so. Not that. So now that that's all glued up, it's a little rickety. As soon as that glue sets up, a lot of that will go away and it'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to paint that one while you work on this one, okay? Yep. And I'll move all this upholstery supplies down. I'm going to be upholstering with a grain sack. We sell these here at the shop. I think they're $22.95. Um, and they are something that we can ship. If Caitlin's on, she can stick the email if you want one shipped to you. Um, you can email there. It's like $22.95 and then shipping is like $7, just a flat rate. But anyways, they're really long. Like, look how long that is. So I'm actually just going to use the top portion of this and then I'm going to use the bottom portion to make two separate pillows or at least one pillow. Um, and I'm going to do it with an offset stripe. So you're going to get a stripe just kind of like down the side because the seats aren't very wide. And if I just went in the middle of my fabric, I wouldn't get any stripes. So I'm going to cut this in half. And we're going to put one stripe on the same side on each seat. And then I'll save this part here for a throw pillow. I hate sewing, but I can sew if I have to. And I was actually talking to Kathy, one of my um, employees last night, and good friend. And she's, uh, we were talking about how I, look, I need to look for somebody that wants to sew. Because I would love pillows for the shop. Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to be using DIY paint and vintage linen, and I'm using my DIY paint brush here. You can pick up the paint and the paintbrush at jamierayvintage.com. <laughs> I just went right in the glue. Um, Careful, I've kind of got it dripped over here wherever I set this down and just... <laughs> I can't ship DIY paint and brushes to Canada, so instead of having these brushes with the other brushes, they're all in the DIY paint category. People are sometimes looking for these brushes and can't find them. If you want the DIY paint brushes, just look under the DIY paint category and you can find them. So I'm not gonna, I'm probably not gonna do the world's best paint job because I want kind of a sloppy, messy finish. I'm gonna sand a lot of it off. I did that yesterday on the dresser and it looks so good. How's it going on there, Zip? So I'm gonna put these ones on first because I've got more movement here. 
This one has a dowel stuck in the bottom, so I'll need to drill that out. I may do that on camera, I may not. <laughs> Let me just say that hand brushing chairs is not my favorite thing in the world. But I do like using DIY paint because the coverage is good. Because if you have to do like four coats on chairs, that would be a pain in the bum. I'm just grabbing a drill bit. I'm going to just okay, do it right now. I'm just going to be here painting this chair. I probably should check comments. Yeah, look and see if people have questions. Okay, let's see. Oh, wrong direction. I'm not getting comments. It's not scrolling. Question. I have a chair just like that. Mine has the cane still perfect. So how would I suggest painting it? Do I paint the cane too? Oh, thanks. Um, you could either tape off the cane and brush the rest, or you could brush the cane or spraying it. If you have access to a paint sprayer, that might be easiest. You can also take um, seeds like this and turn them into planters. Put a little bit of planting fabric in the bottom with some moss and then grow something that comes out the top. I've seen that done, it's really cute. Oh, this is not dry here yet. Yeah, you can't be lifting it. <laughs> uh, I just got some all over my finger. This is gonna be a messy job. I can see that I'm doing this on yeah, camera. Yeah, not live. We would just let these sit and I'd probably clamp them all up and done, but we're just gonna breeze through it and they'll be way sturdier than I they were I just don't wanna before. get paint on my sweater. So what I'm showing you here, this dowel probably broke and they just cut it. They didn't, uh, they didn't do anything with it. So I'm gonna drill that out hopefully here. All right, so I, I got a... Um, here, these are for you. We're gonna need them later anyway. I'm gonna need them, what, oh, for stapling? Yep. All right. Well, I totally forgot what I was gonna say. I don't know. Oh, well, I'll just keep watching. This might be loud, so you know, this is the time, fair warning, maybe turn your uh, volume down. Usually it adjusts though. Alright, we got to the end of that dowel, and the rest of it just popped out. I'm just using a half inch drill bit. Most of these are half inch. These have been hand carved to fit. These ones that are turned have been carved down by the uh, where the insert in the seat is. Oh, we got a new channel Elizabeth member. Elizabeth Pedo, Pedo. I would say that, Piotto. Piotto, that's probably right. If we, if we said it wrong, we're sorry, but welcome to channel membership. All right, let's see if we got any more questions here. Been selling decoupage chairs like that with shabby napkins, cute. How can you tell spindles are hand turns up? They're, they're not uniform and they'll have like, so, so they'll be close to perfect. Someone did a really good job on these. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera. This one is thicker than this one and this one. And this one here is smaller right here in this portion than that one is there. And same with these little rungs. They're very close. Someone did a really neat job, probably used a caliper and was very, um, precise doing each one, but there's just small tiny little imperfections and when they're machine turned they're the machine does them the same every time and They're, they're just really uniform when they're machine, but I actually really like this So this is probably pretty old because they started using machines um, to do like turnings and things as early as like the 30s Yeah, this is like turn of the century I'm probably painting a priceless antique, but the way we're having to repair these is not tr like correct for the chair itself. So I really feel like there's no harm in painting this and I want them to be white. So I'm going to do it. If I don't, uh, if I don't like the way these come together, you can also, sometimes what I'll do is I'll run a, a nail. I'll use my oh. nail gun and just, oh, this one already has a nail in it. There's a nail right there. I'm going to have to pull out. <laughs> I think you may have to come through after I'm done painting these and Zeb may be repairing these and clamping them. <laughs> Then me, are you just pulling it apart? No, I'm not just it? pulling it apart. It's just <laughs> happening. But you guys, the, let's let's talk about the correct way to repair these and the way we'll probably do it off camera. Um, come through with some big clamps, a couple of pieces of wood to like shore up the sides and clamp each individual portion together. That would be the proper way. And then we'll sufficiently let the wood glue dry. Yeah. We will make sure before these get on the floor that they are fixed correctly. Okay. There's literally glue. They'll probably be sturdier than you think. We'll just clamp them. Yeah. All right. And that call gun is. I'm having a hard time talking and painting today. So, oops, did I get some on my sweatshirt? Uh oh. No, I like this one. All right. It's okay. It can go in the uh, the paint sweater pile that is as large as the non-paint sweater pile. This is the DIY well-rounded 
that is the paintbrush that I'm currently using. So it's the same as the Paint Pixie number 12, only it's synthetic. Um, synthetic tends to be easier to wash up, like it doesn't hold on to the color as well, so it makes you crazy that you can't wash it as well. Um, and I think it lays the paint on with less brush strokes, but I've heard some people have different feelings about it each way, so I really feel like it's a matter of personal preference. Okay, coming across this way. This is more difficult than one might think. Okay. <laughs> Now that I've gotten glue all over everything, because that calls good. Let's for catching that troll. Uh, hey guys, I have two orange cane back chairs. I'm going to paint white. I'm thinking about painting the seat cushions bohemian blue like Debbie's couch. That would be fun. So fun fact, Debbie's couch, I think, was like gold originally. And so it's kind of, it looks a little bit green. So the thing to, to remember when you're painting fabric is whatever the original color of the fabric is because you're essentially dyeing it when you water it down like that and work it into the system or the into the fabric is that whatever color you start with is going to change your end result because bohemian blue is a lot bluer in real life but debbie's couch definitely looks more on the green side and i have sat on it and i have not had any paint transfer and it's not crunchy i sat on it with kathy shorts no oh, Ka problem. I thought you said Kathy Shorts. I'm like, Kathy, Kathy Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, the trick really when you're painting fabric is to be patient and do multiple coats. I'm not that kind of patient. All right, I'm getting there. I'm going to get this chair painted one way or the other. Okay. Oh, let's see. What do we got here? Do you ever do things with cane? Yeah. A lot of times, when, when, by the time we get it, the cane is ruined. Um, if the cane was in good shape, we definitely would not be taking it out. I would leave it in. I actually like caning. Wait, what you doing? Just scrolling through comments. All right. I may not paint that one. I might just paint just the one. Oh, I forgot to put the top one. That way that one can dry completely. And I'll paint off camera. So this is what I sometimes talk about. You gotta basically break the chair apart and then re-glue everything back together to get it to be right. Otherwise, the rungs won't seat in there far enough. Okay. Okay. Really, this is just not the best letter. I have a t-shirt on underneath this, but it's one of those like undershirt t-shirts so I'm not taking off my sweater. It would not be the most flattering shirt to wear. You know what I've seen is some people take ribbon and they tie it like from here to the front of the chair. So that way people don't sit on their antique chairs. I saw it when we were in France, remember? There was that chair in the bathroom. Yeah, they had it all over the place. Cause they had some really old chairs in there. I'm definitely going to wax these chairs, not seal, because I didn't clean them very good or at all, which you should. So they're probably going to be bleed through if I were to seal them with a liquid sealer. Anybody else dislike brushing chairs? These spindles are really close together, too. This is going to be interesting. Okay. So this, as long as this is allowed to sit, everything's nice and tight. I'm not getting any creaking. And that would that would glue off just fine but you know plants are always good you know all the best hatched plants would have clamps but they're not here <laughs> where are you we plants? used them at the farmhouse last when i was building the table well i used them like i said three sets of tools are coming we'll be okay all right i'm gonna finish painting this one when you're done with that do you want to start cutting the foam for the seats oh you got paint on your phone that's pretty normal <laughs> jason says my mom does that so no one sits on her furniture with the the, the ribbon ribbon across it yeah. my kids are pretty good about like if i tell them like not to sit on stuff but i don't keep anything too precious yeah it's not snowing today yeah it's been warm like i had a big we're having an indian summer right now is that it's, even kosher to say? I don't even know what that means. It's totally a thing, and I think it's fine to say. Okay. It's basically 
you get like a cold spell in the fall and then it warms back up a little bit right before winter it hits hard. every year. Here, I would just call it a Utah summer because uh, we have it every year. I read it in the Farmer's Almanac, so they're wrong too if it's wrong. No, I'm sure it's right. Okay. So what were you wanting me to oh, do with this one? <laughs> this is going to get a heavy distress because I can already see the bleed through situation happening. Is it already coming through? Yeah, I'm just pushing this in so it's a little bit tighter. When you screw this in from the top, will that hold this together too? Yeah. Okay, um, what are you, no, I don't want you to paint that. So put that down. Okay. I want you to cut the foam. Will you do that for me? Oh, yes. Because they're going to get a little bored if they have to watch me paint a white chair and you paint a white chair. That's not very exciting. What? The white stuff is great. Well, we I have think, a ton of color in our shop right now. I know, we do. So you're going to see a lot of us, us painting stuff white because most of our white stuff sold recently. And it's not to say that color doesn't sell because that's not true. It's just recently we've had furniture we've had for months that hasn't sold and recently all sold and it's all the white stuff. So I've got to paint white to kind of balance out all the color I have going on. It's, when you have a shop or even at your house, it's good to you have some white to offer some place for the eye to rest. Otherwise it gets a little busy, which you can totally do busy, but you got to be like, right on point with it and i'm not that talented of a designer to <laughs> i gotta have white that's the way my my stuff looks best oh uh, gina's got snow <laughs> no snow no uh, no uh indian summer for her there's snow on the mountains yeah there's snow on the mountains but i don't go up there this time of year i wait till there's lots of snow and then i go play and i stay in the car every year i regret it when i get out of the car it's not that i don't like to play with my kids but my bones don't like it they, they have this morning on the treadmill, they were giving me fits. I had a conversation with my body and pull it to knock it off. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this foam to shape since this is not square. So what I did to get this shape is I basically measured the front and the back of the seat because it is not a complete square. And then I wanted it to overlap. So I added an inch all the way around and then just so I found center down here and made the back a little shorter and that's how I got these fun edges here. So, somebody asked why the sunglasses. Those are actually his safety they're, glasses. They're my tinted safety glasses because my clear ones are also at the farmhouse. So, you know, you guys are getting what you get as far as like tools and stuff. We're getting very creative with what we're we have scrappy. on hand. And then, and the funny thing <laughs> is we, think we have all the tools at the farmhouse and then we go to do something we're like, oh, we don't have that. That's I'm like, shop. oh, that's at the shop. Luckily, the shop and the farmhouse are literally three minutes, maybe. <laughs> If there's traffic, they're three minutes apart. But like Jamie said, once once we're done working over there, it'll it'll be a lot easier to just yeah. have the tools where they're at, you know, because we won't be doing projects all over the place. Well, I don't know if that ever changes. We're we're always doing projects everywhere, so I'm trying not to have. Now here's a trick. This is a good tip. When you're painting spindles, like I'm painting here. You don't want to have too much paint on your brush because these are like the number one place where if it's going to drip, it will drip. So I'm almost like dry brushing to get into these details. And I'm just going back and forth, mushing my brush. Probably better if I had the long skinny brush, but I don't feel like getting it on the winter. And I'm kind of mushing in the paint. And personally, I don't care if it's 100% coverage because I'm going to come just stress the heck out of these anyways. But once you do one side, even though the back's already done, I'm going to come back, hold on, let's get those a little better. I'll flip this chair around, see, oops, that's wet. I'm going to, I'll just do it from this way. I'm going to come back and just smooth this out because you could get some weird lines and drips and my brush is pretty dry and that will keep all the paint kind of going the same direction and assure that you don't have any drips coming down your spindles. There's more area here. You think that you get it all. I got it. But anyways, a little part. Oh, glue on my sweater. This might be a work sweater. It's, where it's already done. Well, paint can come off, but glue not so much. All right, so I'm painting the front of this chair here. And I'm just going to brush it across the top. And I'm not going to worry if it gets down into the cracks because I want all that detail to show. Okay. Oh, they can't see that. Zeb, can you? I just talked and didn't show that. I think. Can you flip the camera up a little? What are you showing them? The detail up here. When I bring them in close. 
So I don't think Zeb showed you this earlier, but there's actually a man's face hand carved into these chairs, which is kind of fun. So that's about all the coverage I'm gonna get. I'll let this dry completely and maybe touch up a few places that look a little streaky, but I'm not gonna worry about every little nook and cranny. So what you're doing is going more for like a whitewashed? Yeah. Um, yeah, whitewashed, dry brushed. If you look at a lot of older furniture, especially um, back in the day, I mean, it didn't have great coverage and then it wears off over time, which I'm gonna try to recreate that look because they didn't have the paints that we have now. They were much thinner. All right, you can move the camera back. I'm gonna be painting where they, down low. Okay. I just wanted to show them all that fun I'm, detail. Well, I'm doing something extremely exciting. I'm cutting this foam, hey. which is thick and I'm struggling. Cutting right foam now. is exciting. Now, you could just use your jigsaw, no? No. Or you can use a bread knife. We don't have one here. Yeah, the bread, a bread knife, knife is be, your best option. The bread knife is how we do like new couch seats and things and cushions on large chairs, which would work on this too, but I don't, I don't think, think the, the jigsaw knife. would just get stuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even think we have a bread knife at home. I think it broke. I don't make bread much anymore. Most of my bread comes pre-sliced from the bakery. <laughs> All right. I'm going to step away from this chair for a minute because it's irritating. All me. right. Are you ready to do a seat? I am ready. We probably should make sure we're glue free. Maybe get an, I'll go get another drop cloth. We have another drop cloth. No, probably not. <laughs> and when you're cutting this foam it doesn't have to be perfect because Jamie when she does the upholstery she's going to pull it down real tight and it'll kind of form to the wood anyway well you probably should yeah you see how he's kind of rounding the edges another trick once he's done I'll show you so I'm not really rounding them I'm just kind of cutting at a 45 and that's that's close enough that'll okay. work all right now that I'm sufficiently, luckily this sweater is, <clears throat> oh, Debbie is on. She has a layover on her way to South Carolina. Okay. In case you guys don't know, Debbie is the uh, paint owner of DIY paint and the DIY paint brushes. All right. I think mostly everybody knows Debbie. Okay, there's glue right there. Oh. I think I think if you do it right here, well, just, you're good. Well, what about this? We'll just move it up. I like it. I like it. See, hold this on, this on. part's clean. Don't move mush, that down. Don't mush your phone over. We're just scooting up the drop cloth from what was by our legs because that doesn't have. Well, and I have like sawdust here from. All right, we're gonna bring you in close for this part. Okay, I need those scissors back. You you took the scissors. So I need those back. All right. Oh, Ivy's on. If you guys don't know, um, Caitlin has to leave uh, like halfway through our lives because she's got little boys that go to school. So I'm just cutting this off at an angle. Sorry, tell you what I'm doing here. Um, and Ivy, who's on here, Ivy Duke, she's my full-time shipper. So when you get your paint and it's well packaged, <laughs> Ivy did it. All right, and we need the stapler. Where did I put that at? <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going at an angle across this edge, it'll soften it. So when I pull the, the batting across, where's that batting? There go. It won't look like this. You don't want that. What's that, a 90 degree angle? You want it to be sloping. There's probably professional upholsters on here watching and I apologize in advance, I'm not a professional. Yeah, it gets the job done and it looks good and it'll make a nice comfy seat. I'm a professional in that people buy my stuff, but not a professional in that I'm gonna be like, I know everything I'm doing. I'm just showing you guys what I've learned. All right, I need those scissors. Okay. Okay. Here, I will answer comments, you work. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Let's see. Terry was about to say, oh, there we go. There the comment is. The best tool for cutting foam is an electric knife. Yep. Yep, bread knife. All right, yep, everybody's just saying electric knife. I would use it if I had one. All right, <laughs> All right let's get the uh, drop cloth cut here. So I'm just using a grain sack. Did you address Lori Johnson? Can't uh, figure out how to join channel membership? Nope, you can do her. Okay, so channel membership, we get some extra things, a couple extra videos a month, a chapter, a rough draft chapter, with emphasis on rough draft um, for a book we're writing. And then you also get a couple of printable um, pictures 
now we're doing two because we've been, you, you used to get one that was watercolor and we might do more of those, but you get uh, some of our favorite- uh, Photography. Photography, mostly right now we're, we're focusing on our France photography, which last month we did two, because it doesn't take as much effort to do that as it does a watercolor. Yeah, that just edits it. So I'm thinking this month we've got to get lit. We've had a bunch of sick kids at our house. In fact, Seb would not admit to this, but he's a little under the weather too. Um, Odelia came in this morning. I need the carpet cleaner, mom. So we've had a bunch of sick kids and we're a little bit delayed, but hopefully by the end of the week or beginning of next week, we'll get all of our extras up for the channel members and we'll schedule those extra live videos. So to join channel membership, there's a join button or there's also a link in the description of every video we have. So if you click that little down on the description, it'll bring up a link and you follow that link and you can log in and, and uh, join that way. I didn't do this the way I was going to. Oh, were I thought you I was going to have more. Oh, you know what I could do? Do it sideways? No. I could do a stripe that goes across the So it's 12 seat. inches across in the front and it's 11 deep and 10 inches wide in the back. So let's see. I could put the stripe across here. I think that looks good. Yeah, that across looks the good. Front. Right? Or the other option is to have it kind of, the stripes would be on the side, but I think it looks better right there. Okay. Let me just make sure that's straight. Stripes are the worst. They're so hard to get straight. So you guys see I'm putting that stripe there. Um, Catherine C had a good question. I'm redoing my kitchen table as All we right, speak. Do that. you suggest polyurethane where food doesn't meet? So here's fun we fact. Use a big top most of your pieces from the uh, from the store or factory are going to be lacquered you need safety glasses they're going to be lacquered and lacquer is way more toxic than uh, all your thing once it's cured it's not going to matter so i mean you can use anything oh, you want to seal the it with, I, they need to make these for lashes we like to use um, Sweet Pickens Top Coat, and if you want more of a shinier finish, DIY Big Top. What we've got our table on in our dining room table is big DIY top. Big Top, and it's held up great to all of our crafting. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get loud. All right. So that's what I would seal a table with, and that works for the top and the sides and the legs, everything. Okay, so you can use a handheld staple gun. You don't need an air compressed. Um, pneumatic gun, but I like that one. And I didn't go super tight here. I'll pull it tighter when I do this opposite side and then I'll do these sides. Then I like to do all of the corners. Another important thing to remember is make sure your staples are not so long that they're gonna go through your board into the foam into your bum. Don't ask me how I know. This thing is from just, a leak all of a sudden. Just trust me that it's not, nobody wants a staple in their bum. Now make sure when you're pulling the tension that when you have a line, like I've got this line here, make sure it's straight all the way across because otherwise you're going to get some weird, uh, you're going to get some weird angles. All right, I need that back. So sometimes we do miss questions, Joe. I can't catch them all as we scroll by, but if you really need your question answered and we don't catch it on the live video, email us at customercare at jamierayvintage.com and we see all of those because these live questions i once once we're no longer live i can't respond to them by written comment so you have to either put your comment again down below in the video see like right now i'm scrolling through trying to find that one and i can't find it yeah your best bet is to email customer care at jamierayvintage.com or you can also if you use facebook you can pm me on facebook Oh, I found it. Stacy asked, how can I remove tight bond two? I accidentally glued three sides of a drawer while I was fixing the drawer front. Now I can't get the drawer. Hold on. <laughs> it's going to be loud for a hot Now point. I can't get the drawer front back on. So the only way I've ever found is to break that apart or cut it apart. Once that, once that tight bond two is uh, cured up. You have to keep talking. I can't, like, I don't think anyone can hear me. Once that tight bond two is cured up, um, it's basically a stronger bond than the actual wood fibers are. So I, I've, had, I've had the wood fail before I've had tight bond two fail. It's so it's, it's, that's a tough one. I don't, I don't have a good easy solution for you there. I've had to cut pieces apart and completely redo them um, when I've made mistakes, so. And we've made plenty of mistakes, all right. I wasn't on camera, I'd probably be a little neater at this. All right, so I just cut off the extra batting here because you don't want it to be like poofy at the corners because then it won't lay flat. 
And when I'm doing the corners, I just bring in one side, staple it, bring in the other side, staple it. Don't staple your finger, that's important. And then you're gonna, oh, I didn't get this as tight as I wanted to. So. Stacy, heating the tight bond up might help, but you're gonna burn the wood trying to get the, the glue hot enough. chairs you do the better you're gonna get like that's probably not my best corner I'm not gonna lie you're hurrying on camera it's a thing oh that's the front of the seat yeah that's not gonna do I need you to pull that out can you pull that out what about the stain discoloration on the fabric that is a stain these are actually that's authentic, old, grain sacks. authentic grain sacks and that does not come out it even has some spots here where it's been sewn and patched yeah no 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 you don't I these happen I need you to pull the corner out Oh, pull it out. <laughs> I hey, you're you're going to redo it. Yeah, the coin, I realize that's the front. I have to have a nice, neat front. Um, so when you're using authentic grain, grain sacks, people love it or hate it. I always get them. I wash them. I use fabric softener and OxyClean, and so I get off as much as I can. But there's still going to be some residue left from the fact that they were used in an industrial situation, which is the beauty of them. It's kind of like... When you have old metal and it's been rusted, you don't want to take that rust off because that shows that it's actually been Ooh, used. Watch out. Same thing with this grain sacks. You don't want to take away the age and the patina of the fabric that, you know, people sometimes tea stain their fabric to make it look like this. So when you buy these, you want them to look nice and aged. Now, if you want a grain sack look that's neater because you have OCD, I get that. Just use drop cloth, bleach it, and use one of our JRB stencils, and you can stencil a grain sack logo, grain sack stripes, and then it's gonna be nice, neat, and clean, as opposed to this, where it's like an authentic old grain sack. All right. All right, I've gotta fix this. Do you need me to pull that no, one out I too? No, I need you to. Okay. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do, yeah, I need you to pull out that whole front row there. The whole front row here? The whole front row there. Whew. Just don't poke holes in it. Yeah, just don't do that. <laughs> it's a little stressful. I'll answer comment. Oh, look, there is paint on this. Okay. Yeah, you got a bunch of paint on there. Okay, LOL OCD. Do you remember which green you used on the high chair that was in the background? That was DIY paint in aviary. It's since sold, but it was aviary, which ironically, I took a picture. I even sent it to Debbie. When we busted out the back door of our farmhouse, um, you could see what the previous paint colors were. And at one point, my house was painted almost the exact same shade as aviary green, which is kind of fun. Um, any paint colors and DIY paint comparable to milk paint that was used on the Deborah coffee table? You know, really, if you take the DIY paint and you water it down with white swan, you're going to get more muted colors. So mint chip, uh, mermaid tail, old 57, uh, all of those can be cut with white swan or vintage linen, any of the whites and lighten them up and you're gonna get a really similar look. Um, and then also you could use white swan instead of a flower sack. Okay. All right, I'm coming. Come okay, back. we're gonna get loud again. Jamie's gonna go with the staple gun. I did not pull it tight enough. Do you need me to hold it while you staple well, it? Well, I want my, no. How are your hands doing this morning? That could be some of it too. I don't know. Here, I'll hold this side tight so it doesn't get puckers. Oh, well, the problem is I need to make sure that stripe is straight, so I need to pull it and then look. So let go. I All right. It. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot about that. That's probably why my hands aren't cooperating. I have arthritis, and it's been cold, and my joints have been hurting me. So I used to do a lot of upholstery, but sometimes my hands just don't let me do it, and I'm really stubborn. Hold on. You might want to check. No, I'm good. I'm going to come in in the in-betweens and pull them up. Mostly straight. It's straight enough. All right, now we've got that on there. I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit. Hey, you, you on safety glass up. Oh, just leave them on, and I don't don't let read. them touch your eyelashes. I know it's struggle is <laughs> real. All right, sorry guys, I apologize in advance. Always wear PSA, right, or PSE, personal safety equipment. Debbie right. says she's going to use the grain sack stencil on all the things. 
It's a good one. All right, so this is so much better because I straightened up this line and tightened it. When I get to this corner, I'm not getting this weird wonky like front. It's like nice and tight. I'm hoping that I don't have to um, redo that back of these two. Again. No, I don't think so. All right. You might There's be out of state. Much better corner. Much better corner. Look at that. And you, they look super poofy, but I'm pulling it nice and tight so it squishes it down because I don't want this much foam on these old chairs. All right. Next, I need it back. So Dana has safety glasses designed to go over her regular glasses. Smart. Smart. All right. Well, I already did order at this corner. Debbie's going to grain sack uh, striper jeans. Oh, that'd be cute. If it looks good, do me a pair and ship it to me. I'll wear them with pride. I'll be like, Debbie did these. I got to ship Debbie a package today. Will we be doing more vintage linen? I tried ordering and it was out. Vintage linen? Vintage linen. It should never be out. If email customer care. We don't care, have quantities yeah, on there. Email customer care at jamierayvintage.com and Caitlin can see what's going on. All right. I'm just going to do this in the corner and then I'm going to cut the fabric off. This is going to be way longer than it should. The Kimberly fabric. Drake, I used DIY paint on two end tables. They have cured for a month. I went to clear coat with water-based poly and it started to take the paint off. Same thing happened when I used Sweet Pickens black oil wax. Were they shiny? Were your, uh, were your um, end tables like really shiny? Because the paint will stick, but if you've got a really shiny surface up underneath and you don't at least buff some of the shininess off and you just go to painting, um, you got to be really, really careful when applying the top coat because until you get that top coat on there, it will still water, it's water soluble, so it can still come off if it's shiny underneath and it didn't have anything to grab to. But here's so, the, example of shiny, let me show you here. Well, he does that. Here's a pro tip um, when you put on that very first coat of Big Top, you're going to use the lightest hand possible, meaning you're going to take your, I always use my big Wooster foam brush. It's about three inches wide. I dip it in and then I'm literally just dragging the brush across, not putting any pressure on it. Just, and don't put very much on your brush because otherwise if you put too much, it'll pull up. You'll have to overwork it. Just do a light thin coat. Let that dry completely. Then when you put the second coat on, that paint is like in really well. And then you don't have to be as careful, but that first coat always be soft. I never think about it because I'm always so fast that I never worry about it. Okay, so this here, wash it, paint right over it. This probably too. This is this is on the shinier side. This is MDF that's been carved or whatever and then has like a veneer or some sort of faux finish on the top. But this here, what I would do is just 220 grit, just really lightly, and I might show you here in a second. Um, this, is, this is on the border of being a little bit too shiny. And then this here, you can see the reflection of the sun on it. If you come over here, you can see like the shadow of your hand and things like that on it. This I would, I would buff just so 220 grit. Like when I say buff, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to sand it down through the finish. You just need to scuff it up. So it gives the paint something to stick to. Cause while the DIY paint is great, it sticks to everything. If you go to like seal it or it's going to be a high use thing, it still doesn't have a whole lot it can grab onto and that's going to get scratches or like you said, you're going to have issues when you go to seal it because it's going to want to just slide right off when you reactivate it instead of having something to grab onto. I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to show you how much sanding you need to do. Hang on. Um, if you, if you uh, go to Debbie's channel though, she just did a video where she did an Ikea piece and she talks about how to sand it. Yep. She, her, I watched that video. I think, was it this morning? Did that just come out today? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday? I watched it. It was great. She used all those IOD molds. Now I can't find 220 grit sandpaper. All right, here we go. Okay, so here is an old piece of 220 that we've been using to distress furniture. You can see how that's dulling that up right there. That's all the more 
you need to do, and I'm getting this white powder because whatever this was sealed with, probably a uh, polyacrylic or something like that, is just coming off of the surface there. So that's, I mean, just hand sanding right there. Let me show you the difference. Okay, so you can see less shine here, lots of shine here still. So that's all you have to do. And if, if you've got a shinier piece, and your paint will just stick like magic. All right, so I had a, somebody had a question about, um, hold on, let me pull this back up here. We had a question, no, I lost it. My brain is not functioning well today. Um, okay, hold on. So as far as sanding going against the grain, how I just was right there, it doesn't matter. Like that's not gonna, I never got through the actual finish and into the wood. So, I mean, you can go with the grain if you want, but when we're painting it, I really don't care because the, the wood grain is not going to be seen. And I'm using 220 grit, so it's not going to like really gouge the wood grain anyway. I have no idea what I was going to say. Sorry. Yeah, I completely lost it. It's okay. You're hiding behind the chair. What's the next step? <gasps> we need to screw the chair. This is a Zeb. This is a Zeb. We're to my side. not right here. Maybe. I don't know what that screw was for. All right, and this does need another coat. We'll distress it and wax it, but for time purposes, we're just gonna show you, screw it on, then we'll unscrew it and I'll finish this chair. Oh, you are gonna do another coat of paint? Yeah, it's if like- you decided. Bit, yeah, it needs a little bit more. All right, move it over there and screw it on. This is a delicate process here, because I have to, I gotta do some things. Where are some. my drill bits? Okay, you wanna answer some questions? Yeah, I will. All right. Sorry, I keep getting notifications on my phone and it's distracting me. <laughs> well, turn them off. <laughs> All right. They said that's already looking so pretty. This is I think be it's fine. one of those moments where, yep, the bit I need is at the farmhouse. The bit? That's all right. I'll just, I'll just pre-drill it with this one here. I left my countersink bit. All right, while he's doing that, if you guys have questions about repairing or painting that I haven't answered, go ahead and comment, and I will answer them as he's fixing that. Okay. Sometimes, like, my face needs a second coat, lol. <laughs> yeah, that was me last week when I couldn't wear any makeup because my skin was peeling. Can you guys see that? All right, I'll bring the uh, camera while down. You have, can I just fix this while you... No, I'm good. Okay. Well, i got to put the seat on there, so That's I okay. would... okay. I'm not going to do it where you're going to touch it. Okay. Yeah, last week my skin was all peely. I'm so glad. I'm, just, I'm proud to say that my skin has finally stopped peeling. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little, uh, we'll call it, a, it's not really a countersink, it's like more like a tap hole. Insert screw into tab A, is that what you're saying? And you can put more holes or screws in where needed, depending on your chair. I think four will be fine on this. Okay. So I've got an inch and a quarter screw. This is three quarters of an inch. And the plywood I used is three eighths. So that should be just about right. If it pokes through, I've not really had any issues with that because I didn't countersink these. So the, the, the head of the screw will sit right on the top and it'll be fine. Oh, you love Zeb shirt. Yes, you can pick up the Lehigh shirts in our apparel at jamierayvintage.com. We have a bunch of different fun shirts in there. And the Lehigh ones are because our shop is in Lehigh, Utah. All right, hang on, walking in front of the camera. Debbie again. says Sorry, she got guys. more haifu. Lest you think that's Kung Fu, it's um, not. It's a beauty procedure. <laughs> she just commented. All right. Okay, I need to move this. Have so... I noticed a big... Uh, just, oh, sorry. I'm done. <laughs> Have I noticed a big change in my skin? Um, yeah, it's a lot softer and smoother. But, I mean, I didn't wake up and look 20 years younger. I, was, I kept hoping, but it never happened. Um, dude. Debbie, did you see the troll above? Was there a troll that didn't get removed? I'll look. Um, let's see. I don't know if you'd love this, if you've done this already, but I'd love a, a video on the top 10 tool guide for beginning furniture flippers. We do have a tool video, don't we? We have one 
We have one tool video on our channel, and then if you're a channel member, we have one specifically for channel members that goes into great detail. We haven't done a lot of tool videos with great detail just for our regular videos because most people get a little bored. Okay, this is going to get loud. I might have to go inch and five eighths because there's so much fabric in between. So I may have to do a longer screw. Yeah, the screw is not long enough. It's no. like this delicate balance. It's, it's biting it. It's a delicate balance between having the screw be long enough and then not so long that <laughs> it pokes you in the bum. Ooh. I would flip it. Yeah, I'm gonna flip it. <laughs> flip it, but put it right here where it's clean. Oh, no, that's fine, like that, like that. Simone says, I'm at lunch doing plain clothes washing this. Okay, all right, it's on. Is it on? Yep. All right, boom. Okay, here's our cutie. Well, let's bring the other chair so they can see what it looked like when we got started. We're gonna show you. Hold on, I'll do, I'll do a little pan here. So this is the finish. Now this is not the finished chair. This is almost finished. It'll get one more coat of paint. I'll distress it so all the detail comes out and then it'll get a clear wax. This is the before minus all these dowels that Zeb replaced. And here is the after with a seat. Now I know this isn't everybody's cup of tea. If you wanted it to be less farmhouse, you could totally paint this to be bohemian with some bright colors or you could do like a very traditional finish, very neat, and maybe some uh, plaid would be really cute on these seats, or a floral would be very darling. So you can definitely change up the look of a chair like this just by changing out the fabric and, um, and the paint job. So the sky's really the limits, but I hope this inspires you guys when you find chairs that where the caning has a hole in it, or maybe the seat's completely gone like these, you can still save them by cutting a piece of plywood, getting some upholstery fabric or an old grain sack, or even a curtain. Somebody mentioned that as long as the fabric's thick and you can upholster them and save the day. And this chair will live to see another bump. Oops, sorry, I kicked the camera. All right, um, hit up jamierayvintage.com for the paint products we use today. Make sure if you have friends that like these kinds of videos, you click share and you can copy the link and you can share it in Facebook with all your DIY friends. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. Thanks for joining us on Waste Not Wednesday. Catch you guys later. <laughs> Look at